Welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. My name's Christina. I want to walk you through how I'm going to transform this dresser with all of my supplies and the materials and walk you through each step. I am going to start with a base coat of the chalk paint and this is the Annie Salone chalk paint in cocoa. With a palm chippy brush, I'm just going to go ahead and get a first coat on this entire piece and we're going to wait for that to dry. Chalk paint is extremely thick, so I generally like to start with a moist paint brush. And it's always handy to have a spray water bottle on hand. Helps move your paint around as well as use a lot less paint. So we'll go ahead and let this dry and then we'll get started on our second coat. For the second coat, I'm going to use this oval paintbrush. These are fantastic for holding the paint as well as creating some fabulous texture. I generally, again, start with the moist paintbrush and I'm going to add in a little bit of water as I'm going around. The key to the second coat that I really want to do is create beautiful texture. So a lot of just random brush strokes, a lot of cross hatching, and this is going to build up a nice textured layer. I'm going to go ahead and save both those brushes I just used. They've got quite a bit of paint on them and we're actually going to need those for our finishing touch when we get closer to the end. Before we begin with the next steps, it's really important to let the base coat dry. As part of the upcoming steps, I'm going to use this IOD decor transfer. Prime and trim. So these are strips of trim and you can use a couple or one, whichever, but you can cut in between. So I'm going to go and prepare this for part of our steps ahead. As I continue to wait for the base coat to dry, I'm gonna use this Minwax gel stain um, in aged oak. And this was a previously painted piece and I got most of the paint off, but not all. There was still a little paint at the rim of this tabletop, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply this uh, gel stain. And it's pretty easy application. I'm using a disposable applicator and literally just side to side brush strokes and then long brush strokes at the end, just to give it a nice smooth finish there. When you're stroking the applicator at the very end as well, you really, really wanna go very, very lightly and that will eliminate any brush strokes. You can actually receive a beautiful wood finish with this gel stain, even over chalk paint. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that in just a few. You generally only need one application and you get a beautiful, beautiful finish. Now that the gel stain is completely dry, which varies depending on the surface and your room temperature that you've uh, applied the stain, I'm gonna go ahead and put on a uh, lacquer finish just for that nice durability. And you can put on one, I would recommend probably two, and that's gonna give it a nice, strong, durable finish. And again, I'm just using a disposable sponge applicator. You can use a paintbrush as well. And again, just nice long, even strokes and let that dry, which is fairly quick and your tabletop's all done. And I'm really looking forward to showing you that you can put this stain over that chalk paint. Now at the beginning, I got most of the paint off, but I did not get very much off the legs of this dresser. But I would really like to actually have that beautiful wood stain on the um, rounded off legs here. So I'm gonna put in some painter's tape onto my frame here, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the same gel stain in the aged oak right directly on top of the chalk paint. Because it's a gel, it's very, very gooey. It's almost like a jello and you literally just dap it on and just kind of feather it out. You may, it depends on the chalk paint tone that you're putting it on, need two coats, but for the tone that I've used in the cocoa, I only needed the one application. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint both of these legs and let that dry. And you can see the difference between a painted leg versus the wood stain with the gel. And I absolutely love this. 
Because I sell my pieces of furniture, I like to paint the inside frames of the drawers. To me, it just looks tidy and a little bit more professional. And I wanna show you a little trick that I do for the actual inside frame from the sides and the back. And I actually will use shellac. I recommend it to do this outdoors, but just for the video, I'm just gonna show you quickly inside here, that as you can see, the inside frame is very dry. So if you go around with a shellac and give that a nice top up, not only does this eliminate any odors, it makes all the inside foundation nice and fresh and new again. So for our next step, I want to make two color washes, one in old ochre and one in graphite. And all I'm going to do is mix 50% water and 50% paint. I've got some moist and some dry shop towels. And you have one of two ways you can do color washes. One way is literally you're going to apply the wash onto the painted surface. Again, it has to be completely dry, really important so you don't lift that base coat off. I generally, when I'm doing this, I like to add that texture. So with the rags, or the moist rags, instead of just wiping it off and just leaving a hue, I like to create some textures with it. I generally like to move that um, damp cloth around as much as possible because the more I can create uh, random textures, the more natural and organic it will look. And you'll see why as we continue on. Again, you can just literally apply it on. You don't have to worry about your brush strokes, but for me, I like to do a lot of the cross hatching and I like to overlap because I'm gonna work in small sections so I don't have too much runoff with the paint wash. With naturally worn and antiqued um, painted furnitures from way back centuries ago, you'll notice there is a lot of highlights and lowlights. So that's essentially what I'm creating um, as my base before we get into some of this distressing. I'm going to go ahead and finish off all around this dresser with this old ochre and we're going to go ahead and let that dry. But as you can see, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a close up here, is it is really, really um, organic with the ragging versus just a straight color wash. Now that everything is completely dry, I'm going to go ahead with that graphite uh, chalk paint, which is a black but more of a really dark gray, so it's kind of on that borderline. And I'm going to go around and make some low lights doing the exact same thing that we did with the old ochre. So just randomly going to just rag that on there, create a lot more texture. Again. Um, I find that it looks a little bit more natural when you overlap it a little bit, so I just do it in small sections. I just wanted to give you a quick view as you can see how you can create the highlights and the lowlights, so just kind of giving that contrast difference between the old ochre and the graphite. The color washing slash ragging technique here is so super easy. And again, it's the exact same thing as I did with the old ochre. And I'm just gonna go around and complete all the drawer fronts and the frame as well as the sides. And then we're gonna have a really nice low light. Um, so we can move on to our next step. I'm gonna go ahead and let this completely dry and then we're going to move on to the transfer application. With IOD transfers, you can cut and style however you want to make your design. So with these um, trim and prim transfers, they do come in the strips and I'm just going to use them as a trim and I think I'm going to double up as I get into the bigger drawers. But as you can see, you're just going to cut in place how you see your design and they give you a little applicator. It's just a little plastic applicator. And all you're going to do is literally, you're just, it's almost a scratching, but it's, it's not. You're literally just rubbing the transfer on. And you want to be a little methodical about it because if you miss any areas, the transfer is not going to actually adhere to um, 
the area that you're applying it to. So don't rush it, but it actually does go along quite quickly. I generally will lift up what I feel I have actually rubbed on just to double check that it's there and it's it's getting on and I'm not having any little residuals left over. And for the edges, I think what I'm going to do is just cut a little extra off and I'm actually just going to rub it so it wraps around the drawer. And I'm going to do this to all my drawer fronts with the design that I've picked through the transfers. For the dresser size, I actually had to use two transfers, but I still will have some of these left over so I can use it for another project. So again, this is the design I'm kind of going with and just giving you a quick overview. Really easy for application. It literally only takes a few moments and boom, you've got your design on. But we're actually gonna do something else with this and I'm gonna go back to that old ochre wash and I'm actually gonna do another um, color wash on all my drawer fronts just with the ochre, not the graphite, just the ochre. So there is a reason why I'm doing this. It's not because I want to wipe out any of the coloring of the transfer. It's just I want it to kind of go into as if it was designed originally with this piece. And it's all part of the aging and distressing that we're going to do. So the next few steps are pretty important in order to create this finish. Now that that's all completed, I'm going to go and put an application of the lacquer all over the dresser, frame, drawer fronts, and the transfer. And that's going to seal everything. And we're actually going to be doing two, maybe three coats of the lacquer. And you're going to see why as we continue on to the next step. While I had the lacquer out, I'm going to go ahead and put some lacquer um, finish on these legs that we did the gel stain on, and I'm super happy with the results. So remember I told you to save those original brushes that we use with the base coat? Now I'm going to go ahead with all the residual paint that's left on both those brushes, and I'm literally going around just in random to the frame onto the transfer, off the transfer, and kind of make this clouded effect just very, very lightly. It's almost kind of like that dry brushing, but even knowing the paint's a little bit moist, it's just going around in random. And as you can see, I'm fading everything in together. Now for the distressment. For the table front, the angle was really bad with the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this dresser up onto its side so I can show you close up and personal exactly how I did this. And I'm going to show you all these products again, step by step. This process is actually really easy, but I have a lot of materials I'm using at the same time and then trying to film got a little bit complicated. So it's just going to be a little bit easier when I can get the dresser up onto its side and I can focus the camera and direct you exactly how we're achieving this look. To add continuity to this whole design of the dresser, I am going to go ahead and use this Easy Egg and Dart stencil by Royal Design. And I'm just going to add it to the bottom and the top of the sides here. So it kind of matches in a little bit with the IOD transfer that we used on the front. And then I'm going to finish off with the distressment up close and personal so you can get that whole formulation of what I did. So with the stenciling, I'm literally just dry brushing old ochre and graphite onto the stencil just so it's just kind of faded in and out a little bit there and it's part of that worn look that we have going on in the front of the dresser. Again, I just wanted to have that trim and border with the stencil look on the sides as well. So now we can go ahead with these supplies. We're going to be using milk paint in a dry form. The first step I have done is I've applied the lacquer. And I'm a little bit generous with this because you want it to be moist when you go ahead and start these, these next few steps. Once I completed all of the lacquer application in the area I was doing, I actually added a little bit of water to it to keep it moist. 
So with the milk paint colors in a dry form and fresco, which is kind of this, I don't know how else to describe it. It's almost like uh, a flower, but it, what it's doing is it's, it's almost like a plaster of Paris in its own way. And what it's gonna do is create some textures as well as stick to the lacquer. And you're literally, I'm applying it kind of like I'm using flour onto a baking pan. And I'm just in random giving it that um, textures and kind of that faded as if it got, you know, worn over time. And I'm doing the exact same thing with the dry milk paint pigment. And I'm using a French toast, which kind of has a rusted kind of look to it. I'm using another color, which is the honeysuckle. And it's a very similar color tone as the old ochre. And this blue spruce, I wanted to add that little bit of a natural green blue age that over, you know, years and years, if not decades of time, you would see that worn uh, color Almost a little bit of a patina effect is really what I'm just trying to go for. So once I've added the fresco and the milk paint powder, I actually go around with a little bit of water and I just spray, just a nice even spray all over. And what I wanna do is moisten that milk paint powder. It's going to help bring up the color of the milk paint powder, as well as stick to the original varnish we have on there. Once I've done all that and I'm happy with that application, I'm just gonna go ahead with a heat gun here. You can use a hair dryer, it doesn't matter. This is gonna help dry and adhere everything to um, into place. And you can always go back with a dry towel and if there's anything residual that hasn't stuck um, to the original application, you can go ahead and just wipe that away. And at the end, I am using a matte sealer. This is the exact same thing as lacquer. It's just in a spray form. So I'm just going to lightly spray. It will lock and seal everything into place. This is also an indoor uh, safe friendly product so it does not smell and it's not toxic. For the drawers of this, I'm going to go ahead with a wallpaper. I'm going to cut them into place. I'm going to place it with a Mod Podge and then put a matte varnish on top to seal everything so that way you can wipe the wallpaper and clean the inside of drawers. Um, I just think it's nice and professional especially since the pieces are for sale and here we are we've got a completed piece and I am absolutely loving these results. This is the first time I've ever done this particular type of technique if you even want to call it a technique I think it's just a bunch of strategies put together and here we're this is what you've created. But I really hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate and leave me a comment in the comment box below. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you again next week for another decorative finish with chalk paint. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.